Hey, it's Pastor Dudley Rutherford, Senior Pastor of Shepherd Church in Porter Ranch, California, which is in the northwest corner of the greater Los Angeles area in the San Fernando Valley. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to today's podcast called Godly Goosebumps. And here we tell stories, uh, different kinds of stories where we see God moving, not always in mysterious ways, but we just see God's hand. And there are those who don't believe in the existence of God. I was talking to someone the other day that just had a hard time believing or having faith in life, uh, the afterlife. We were, we were talking about different things. But when you study uh, the inner workings of the world, the earth, the human body, the mind, and you really go deep. I, I saw a picture of the, an eyeball that they magnified in it. It was the weirdest thing ever. But you see how God is interwoven in everything that happens uh, in our life, uh, both physically and spiritually. And so we tell these stories. And if you're not a subscriber, you just you just came across this uh, podcast, I do want to thank you, but uh, I do want to encourage you to subscribe. And we don't do a, a podcast every day or every week, but when we do these, we edit them and get them out to you, and it, it'll just be a time and a word of encouragement for you and a reminder to you that there is a God. Because some of you right now are going through some difficult times, and you're wondering, where is God? And how? when I call out to him, why doesn't he answer immediately? And a lot of times when we go through the storms of life and trials and tribulations, uh, God allows those things to happen so that we trust in Him. And not 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 everything is handled the same in our lives. Uh, they say the same sun that hardens the clay melts the butter. So God, as He is in the world and and He's in our lives, not everybody has a soft heart. Some people, they have a hardened heart. But for others we understand and we we bow before him and we worship him and i hope that i hope that as you listen to some of these stories and not just this story but other stories that you will be drawn into having a a more personal relationship uh, with jesus christ so today i want to talk about just our world and in, in which we live we're in the midst of the political season and things are happening even right now that just seem unbelievable uh, with the courts and this uh, election between uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump, and it, it doesn't matter because of the media and because of of uh, all the news networks, social media. I mean, we're just living in a divided, a divided uh, country, and we're we're polarized. Uh, we have left versus right. We have conservative versus liberal. We have Republican versus Democrats. We have those that are pro life and those that are pro choice. Uh, we have those that. Uh, that want to sexualize children in, in elementary schools. And we have parents who are insisting that it's it's not the school's business to discuss these things with their children. And, uh, of course, I tend to be on the conservative side, and I, I believe that that parents should have full authority over what happens in the life of their children and, and, and to raise them in the ways of the Lord. And if 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 we're raised our children in the ways of the Lord, that our whole nation, our whole world would be different. But when you look at what's happening just, again, in our school system, the political arena, in our universities, in our colleges, it appears that the, that the country as a whole has, has almost been hijacked. I don't even recognize things that are happening in our world. And we seems like we're continuing to drift further and further uh, to the left and really further and further away from God. And, you know, God, you can go through the Bible, there's going to come a point where there will be a day of judgment. The Bible makes it very, very clear that there is coming a day of judgment, that that day uh, is not known by anybody but God himself, but that day will one day uh, happen. And the Bible says, I want to read this verse to you, and we'll put it on the screen, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. This is in the Bible. Uh, it says that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin condemns any people. There's something about sin that that is is destructive, and sin is not uh, 
uh, arbitrarily decided what's what's sin and what's not sin. It's the Bible. That, that's, that's why I have a Bible. That's why I carry a Bible. That's why I study the Bible. That's why I preach from the Bible, is because this is the standard. Culture is not the standard. Uh, the, 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 you vote, and whoever has the most votes is not the standard. Uh, personal opinions are not the standard. The standard is the Word of God. And the Bible says, and, and, and it all, we also know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and, and forever, and that this Word is eternal. And so we encourage you, whatever the issues that you're wrestling with uh, during this political season— Try to narrow it down to biblical principles and and study the Word of God. And if, if you want to vote, we encourage you to vote. You should, should vote. But vote for the person who is going to stand for things that are in this book. And I don't want to go into all those details now, but I just I, – because we're going to talk about something else. I'm going to share kind of an interesting story with you here. But just remember this Bible verse, righteousness exalts a nation. All right, so if there are people of God, you know, we're, we're not a Christian nation. We're, we have atheists, agnostics, we have all kinds of religions in this country, but I do believe that if there's a nation full of people who seek to honor God, to worship God, and to love God, that God will exalt that nation. But a nation that does not honor God, that God will and can remove his hand of blessing upon that nation. There are many verses that talk about how God ordain, has ordained men and he's ordained governments, but nations rise and fall. Kings come and go. Presidents come and go. And oftentimes we would never know, but God is orchestrating that behind the scenes, exalting nations that serve him and condemning nations that do not serve him. So this is an important season for you, for me, for our church, for our country. And as Christians, as believers, we're the ones that are called as believers to repent and to turn from our wicked ways and to seek God's face. And if we'll do that, he will hear our prayer and he will forgive us of our sins and he will heal our land. So we, we can talk about that at another point, but I want to tell you the story about a man named Joe Wright. Joe Wright is actually a dear, dear friend of mine, one of my, one of my closest friends. Um, I grew up in a church in Wichita, Kansas, and eventually moved on and came to California. And back where I grew up in that city, in that town, Wichita, Kansas, Pastor Joe Wright pastored a church there for many, many years. And the name of that church was Central Christian Church. And Joe is a very gregarious, kind, loving man. He's a pastor, man of God. And I don't care what room he walks into, he runs around, gives everybody a hug, everybody a kiss, everybody a handshake. He's got this southern accent. He was involved with a singing group years ago. He traveled all over the country in this, in this worship uh, team. I think they were called the Gospel Couriers, if I remember correctly. But this loving pastor, man of God, part of a singing group, preaches at this local church there in Wichita, Kansas, for many, many, many years. And Joe was very pro-life. Uh, uh, he got real involved. There's a big pro-life movement in Wichita, Kansas that still exists today. And he was one of the guys on the front line of, of the pro-life movement uh, there in Wichita. And I always call him, his name's Joe Wright. I call him Joe Wright to life is what I would call him. Joe Wright with a W-R-I-T like his name is spelled. Joe Wright to life is what I call him. I actually have that as his phone number. Uh, I call him Joe Wright to life in my phone index uh, full of names. But one day, because he was so involved in, in that arena, the political arena, he actually had a show, him and another pastor, a radio show of another pastor, both the two of them, on Sunday nights. I think it was like, like a two- or three-hour show. And I, I, I would love to do this in California if somebody could get this all together. But it's on Sunday nights. It was live. They would talk about uh, events going on in the nation, and then people could call in from all over uh, the, uh, Wichita, and they would discuss these, these political issues. 
So one day, he was well-known, well-liked, well-loved. He was asked uh, to lead a prayer at the Kansas State House of Representatives. You know, they have these, these legislatures. Uh, they meet, and they, they open up their session in prayer. They, they do that even today in Washington, D.C., and there's always those who say the separation of church and state, but they open up, members of Congress, they open up with someone coming in and saying a word of prayer. And so he is in Wichita, he's in Kansas, it's the House of Representatives, they asked him to come in and to lead the opening prayer. Now what they were expecting that day, they were expecting a normal, boring, flabby, perfunctory prayer. Nothing unusual, just a basic, Lord bless us, thank you for today, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. But Pastor Joe Wright, they didn't know who, who they were actually asking to pray. He stood up and he prayed a prayer. And I'm going to read this prayer to you. Uh, it became, it became uh, very controversial. It, it, it was something that divided the, the house that day. Uh, eventually, uh, it was picked up on uh, nationwide uh, radio. I think there was a guy named Paul Harvey who actually heard about all this and and picked this story up, and they he they would read this story. It, I mean, and and the the thing that's funny about this whole story, and there is something funny about it. It wasn't really even Joe's prayer. We found out later there was another pastor named Bob Russell who's also a dear friend, who preached in Louisville, Kentucky, one of the largest churches uh, in, in, uh, in the world at that time, at uh, Southeast Christian Church, where today Kyle Eidelman is the pastor. Kyle Eidelman wrote a book called Not a Fan and other books and was actually on our staff for a little while here in uh, Southern California. I know this was a lot of information, but I'm giving it to you nonetheless. But... Uh, so, so this wasn't even Joe Wright's prayer. It was a prayer that Bob Russell had prayed, but Joe Wright took the prayer, copied the prayer, and read the prayer for the Kansas uh, senators and uh, the house there. And while he was reading the prayer, people got so offended. They began to get up, and they actually walked out. I think they said, we will never, ever have this man ever come back uh, and pray for us again. Became one of the most controversial things in the nation at that time. Here's what he prayed. And you ask me if this is controversial. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, it won't be. But think about what's going on in our world today, um, and, and you'll understand that uh, how divisive this was inside a political arena. But here's, here's, here's the prayer that he prayed. Are you ready? Here we go. Heavenly Father, we come before you today to ask your forgiveness and seek your direction and guidance. We know your word says, woe to those who call evil good, but that's exactly what we've done. We have lost our spiritual equilibrium and inverted our values. Pastor Joe went on to pray, we confess that we have ridiculed the absolute truth of the word and called it moral pluralism. We have worshiped other gods and called it multiculturalism. We have endorsed perversion and we've called it an alternative lifestyle. We have exploited the poor and called it the lottery. We have neglected the needy and called it self-preservation. We have rewarded laziness and called it welfare. We have killed the unborn and called it choice. We have shot abortionists and called it justifiable. We have neglected to discipline our children and called it building esteem. We have abused power and called it political savvy. We have coveted our neighbor's possessions and called it ambition. We have polluted the air with profanity and pornography and called it freedom of expression. We have ridiculed the time-honored values of our forefathers and called it enlightenment. And then he prayed this, Search us, O God, and know our hearts. Try us and see if there be some wicked way in us. And cleanse us from every sin and set us free. Guide and bless these men and women who have been sent here by the people of Kansas and who have been ordained by you to govern this great state. 
Grant them your wisdom to rule, and may their decisions direct us to the center of your will. I ask it in the name of your Son, the living Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Is that a prayer or what? That takes us back to that thought I mentioned earlier about us as Christians turning from our wicked ways, repenting, calling upon the name of the Lord, and praying that he would hear, that he would hear our prayers all the way up in heaven. He would hear our prayers. And if we turn and if we pray, we call on his name, confess our sins, that he will forgive us our sins and he will heal this land. I... I I, I, I tell you, I wish that prayer was read in every state house in the country. And again, I think our nation would be better if collectively we got down on our knees and sought God's forgiveness for the sin in our lives and the sin in this nation and turned back to God and once again righteousness would, would exalt the nation. I'm telling you, as long as we call good evil and evil good as a people and we turn from God away from God and follow our evil ways, I'm telling you, God's judgment's going to fall upon this land. I close this podcast today with Psalm chapter 1, verses 2 through 6. Those who delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditate on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. And whatever they do prospers, not so the wicked. They are like the chaff that The wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Oh, I pray that each of you, as a believer in Jesus, pick up your Bible, read uh, Psalm chapter 1, and determine today, determine today that we'll start to seek after the things of a living God. If we don't, we're going to watch God remove his hand of blessing off this nation, off this land, off our families, off our church, off of each of us as individuals. Thank you for tuning in to Godly Goosebumps today. I hope you enjoyed that prayer by Pastor Joe Wright. And uh, get that prayer and continue to pray each and every day. And let's seek God's face and God's will and walk humbly before him. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and stay tuned uh, for the next episode, the next podcast of Godly Goosebumps. Thank you for listening today.